me to answer questions, apparently. Got any? <laughs> oh, not all at once. Come on, speak. What's your favorite color? Electric blue. <laughs> God, I don't think he'd fucking bother. <laughs> what bands did you play in? I can't remember. <laughs> Currently, it's Public Image Limited. <laughs> and with a bit of luck, I mean, that's why I'm here, really, is to try and squeeze a gig into Iceland. So, mm, sometime in the early next year, Promoters, are you listening? <laughs> and then you shall see some real talent. <laughs> Do you know the Icelandic pirates? You have to be... Oh, the pirate party? Yeah. Yeah, what happened? I thought you were going to win. We kind of won, but not as much as we wanted to. Well, that's exceedingly crap pirates. <laughs> <laughs> Will you have a beer with me after the show? <laughs> I don't drink with strange men. <laughs> Come on, don't be shy. It's only Uncle Johnny here. What's in the, what's in the bags on your hand, A uh, packet of ciggies. And the other is my diarrhea catcher. <laughs> Imodium does not work. <laughs> Thank God I'm not mic'd up. <laughs> you know, oh. your hand. Yeah, 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 what the one I've just used. <laughs> no, 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 I keep my diseases to myself. <laughs> Milk. Yeah, You'd think it would be butter, wouldn't it? Yeah. Butter did the wonders for me, right? Apart from putting on weight because you have to eat the product you're promoting. But it did, it, it rescued me from a, an endless debt with large record labels. Uh, they would not let me go easy. And so a lot of that went into paying them off. And uh, that kind of improved my life ever since. It's the first time I've managed to keep a band together for more than two records. Fucking hell, you know. So, uh, what are large record labels for, really, but breaking bands apart? Unless, of course, you like join the shit storm and go with the flow, and then you can become bozo and shake hands with the Pope. <laughs> ah, what a mockery he's turned you two into. Not me, just you two. <laughs> I like all of them. All of them. I don't pick favourites. And the best song I have ever written, I haven't written yet. And that's what keeps me going. I think so. I don't really have a routine. Somebody tries to wake me up and then I trot off to a gig and then I go straight back to bed again. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a routine of sorts. I generally like to rest as much as I possibly can because I, I really don't see the point in being excited about being alive, do you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, probably also the best thing I ever did was joining the Sex Pistols. Mm. That was a... Uh, a part of me I didn't know I had in me, and the thrill of writing songs, and even attempting to sing, it was the first time ever. So I went to Catholic school, you see, and uh, that meant if you had any singing voice at all, they'd co-opt you into the choir, which meant the priests had access to your private parts. <laughs> So the art of not being able to sing was highly practiced by me up to that point. <laughs> Any priests in the house? Uh -oh. You're waving your hand. 
You're an ordained priest. Oh, God bless you. Wait, 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 you can't all talk at once. What, what was it? What was the most inspired song you ever wrote? Again, I, all of them. They're all little pieces of the jigsaw puzzle that go into make up the mess that I call a life. I mean, that's, that's what you write songs for. That's what you get into this for. Is it's really, you're, you're clearing your own soul, in a way, and you're exposing yourself to millions of people who usually generally snigger and laugh or ferociously hate you. There's a uh, 10% that stick with you. Any 10 percenters in here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah! That's 20. <laughs> Life's on the up. You say you haven't lasted any day unless you record, though. Is it close to work Apparently, that was the rumour. <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, is that when you large record companies, what they do is their staff, they, they, you know, they intermingle with different members and tell each other different little stories. And before you know it, people are like following these Chinese whispers and everything turns into war. And it's done really to manipulate you. Unless you have a, a, a solid management, I suppose, that stops that happening. But I mean, uh, I don't like solid managers, I, apart from Rambo. <laughs> and he's fucking solid. <laughs> What's your creative process? Uh, whatever happens, happens. Uh, I don't have specific sit down at the table and write moments. I, I think that's strictly for assholes. <laughs> You know, and it's just daily life experience. Any conversation with someone could spark something off or trigger something brilliant in your mind. You know, that goes towards solving a problem again. My songs don't make problems, they solve them for me. And, and I know that works with an audience too. Uh, the way I like to perform is just uh, right now, right up at me, I see your eyes. That tells me everything. So I know where I am in the world. Anything that keeps me further away from my fellow human beings is uh, not going to work for me. Except sleep. Do you want to come and sleep with me? <laughs> what would I do in an old folks home? I'd masturbate like a fucking man. <laughs> You're a legend of punk rock. Why don't you start your own label? I have started my own label. Oh, it's cool. It's called Pill Official. Uh, the a reason we didn't be able to do that up till the last five, seven years is uh, the record commitments were too all imposing. From the Sex Pistols onwards, I was dragged into Virgin Records deals that had no way of breaking. And uh, I wasn't going to make rubbish records just to get off the label. So they kept me, and you know, like a precious commodity that wouldn't promote me. And every record I put out, from uh, Pill in particular, Metal Box, my God, they fucking hated it when they heard it. It was the most annoying nonsense. And. Yeah! Now that's one of the 80%. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the clap's about, but I hope you get the clap for it. <laughs> you know, whenever you do anything different, and, and, and I just naturally do things differently, I can't help it, I like being an individual. I don't follow a style trend. Unfortunately, many people follow me. Now, there I am on record labels, get dealing with the subject, and they're hating what I'm doing, yet they're signing bands, I noticed over the years, that were very close to imitating the stuff I was coming up with. And that is bloody infuriating. And not a sign of success at all. And it wouldn't promote me, but it would the second best versions. I suppose, you know, it's, uh, that people expect me to cooperate. No, I'm not having under that. This is like my life's experience, and I'll share that with you but I will not alter any of it because I believe in telling the truth. 
I have to, because I've got no fucking memory at all. <laughs> <laughs> so you make the best of life, you know. What was the first great lyric you wrote? All of it. <laughs> that was the one where you knew you had something. Uh, it's a song, actually. I know what you're saying. Um, that I realised I could write songs. Uh, it was about this girl that lived uh, up the road, and she was a mate of Sid's, and... Uh, Mandy was her name, and I wrote a song about murdering her because uh, she made this vile cocktail thing of sudden comfort, red wine and vodka. <laughs> <laughs> That's what started the diarrhoea. <laughs> I miss Sid, I miss Sid like mad. I, I, I miss anyone, even my worst enemies. I can't stand the thought of people dying. I don't like it at all. I miss their space. It's, uh, you know, it's part of my nature. Uh, death is an enormous mystery. I don't know if anything happens at all. Probably not. So I'm in no fucking rush to meet it. <laughs> And that's my message, plain and clear, live as long as you can. I don't care if you've lost all your arms, legs, and there's nothing but teeth and a rattly old brain. Live. This is all you've got. Thank you. What? Have I got a love child? <laughs> I'm not telling you about my underage activities. <laughs> Uh, no, very quiet, funnily enough. <laughs> uh, shy, shy, very, very shy, and still am. I have to uh, build myself up before I come out here and talk to you. And I'm, I'm usually sitting silence and with nerves, because I don't like the idea of disappointing myself. <laughs> very shy. I am. What channel is it on? Damn, I bet, I bet it won't be on. I prefer an Irish pub. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get you to play a song? Yeah. Never. <laughs> There's no money in it. <laughs> I learned Malcolm's lessons well. <laughs> I miss Malcolm too, you know. Nasty piece of work, him. Uh, Two-faced as fuck. Uh, not even proper criminal, just just a parasitic ponce. <laughs> and I miss it. You know, it's just, I mean, at least it's a human being. And as vile as he was, that was for me a form of entertainment. <coughs> People are cheap. Did the incident chili give you a headache? No. What was the incident? No, it was a silly glass, and, it, and the poor kid didn't mean it, and so the gig must go on. I was upset because the cup wasn't big enough. <laughs> no, no, I'm not joking. I, I'd love to play the Jesus on the cross moment. <laughs> oh, I'm dying. The show must go on. <laughs> oh, overdone as per usual. No, a lot of blood gushed out first, and then nothing. But no, I never felt it. Oh, my head's as tough as a brick. Do you find your taste in other music changes as you get older? No, because my record collection is still there, and I'm adding to it all the time. And I love to go back to stuff I bought 40, 50, 60 years ago, every now and again, and mix it all up. Uh, I think, yeah, since pop music began, the world's become, like, a much fucking better place. <laughs> I remember having to listen to orchestras on the radio before, you know? Before Radio Luxembourg and those things. So I've been around some time, but I love what people do with music. I do. It, it, it's the best form of education, and it can change the world for the better. <laughs> Who? Sting. I thought he said string. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that'd be one of his new sexual techniques. He loves to <laughs> 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 <laughs>
he's a funny man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't know, I was very young, I was four or five, but I loved it. Loved to listen to that stuff, yeah. I mean, that, that's where pop music became wow. And all manner of things were possible. That's why Sergeant Peppers was so successful, it's because of them, them networks playing it. And then there was brave effort on their part too, as a, a, what started out as a rock and roll versions band, suddenly bringing in umpa music. You know, thrilling. Go blow your French horn, John Lennon. very, very young. They're just four or five. My mum and dad dragged us off to a, the Finsbury Park Astoria and it was thrilling. Just, just, just one man on the stage and you couldn't hear nothing of him. It was very great, that. Uh, <laughs> that girl's just screaming and it terrified me. I remember being really frightened by the noise of, of so many young women <laughs> screaming. Loved it, though. <laughs> loved it and, and kind of even at that age I thought I'd love to be on that stage but didn't think I'd ever have the nerve to do it so yeah no that, that's that's a memory that's never left me <laughs> who the fucking thought Cliff Richards would be <laughs> such a big influence <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean though and I tell you about mix and match in life and you know you can get the good out of everything if you bother to look proper but for me, my glass is always half full, not half empty. Do you know any Icelandic bands? Yeah. Uh, probably Hawkwind's re-releases. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, I don't do it that. I don't do that anymore. I don't praise young bands. I don't want to because it, it does wrong things to them. It turns their heads and you, you don't want to ha add an, an extra layer of conceit to anyone. It's best they all think we hate them. <laughs> <laughs> it means they have to work that little bit harder, and that extra bit of effort pays off. You mentioned the record labels signing acts that were, that were stealing your sound. Yeah, well, the approaching the musical landscape that Pill was, uh, well, was interested in. From the Johnny Lydon sound. I don't know if you could say there's any one sound. I mean, it, it all depends on my moods as I go through life. Uh, I don't make no two records the same, and, and for some reason, that, that, whether that be accidental or member changes, but it's, it's usually because I want to approach a subject not the same way twice, but find another road in. And using, uh, using the idea of very long tracks and trance-like drones and melodies, and lo and behold, this all turned into massive attack. <laughs> You know, and smashing pumpkins. They were definitely giving a nod and a wink in our direction, but never saying thanks. Do you know any Icelandic bands? Who? Uh, do you know any Icelandic oh, bands? Oh, wait, wait one second. No, and you too, yeah, it comes to. Well done, Johnny. Manager. <laughs> you too, I remember. Do you remember the, uh, the sound of their guitar? Well, that was taken straight off public image. Totally. That rhythmic noise that Mr. Levine could kick up then. Fucking love the way that bloke plays. Shame he's not dead. <laughs> oh, let's see, who did one? Megadeth, didn't they? Oh my God, they murdered that. <laughs> huh? Yeah, well, it's a shame they don't murder themselves. <laughs> But the joke of that one was that uh, they made it with Steve Jones. He played on it, you know, the Sex Pistols' original guitarist, and uh, and they got the fucking words wrong. Boats 
anything to do with the ocean. Like that or TV. I will watch TV <laughs> relentlessly. <laughs> I love TV. <laughs> Where's the channel control? <laughs> uh, I don't believe in a heaven or a hell. I just believe in life and, and I love it dearly. This is all I've got and it's all I want. Uh, there's been two incidences in, in my life uh, where it was nearly taken from me. One was meningitis when I was seven. And it, that nearly killed me. Uh, when I came out of that, it had taken a lot of my memories away and took something like four years to recover them. So I know what isolation feels like. That was hell on earth. And you don't recognize your own mum and dad. It leaves a lasting impression on you to value everybody else's existence and to rely on people to be telling me the truth. This is a, if I'm difficult to work with, it's definitely on that level. But then at the same time, because of the Irish in me, I love to tell a good story. <laughs> <laughs> a little fib every now and again. <laughs> the spice of life. Loved her. And then the second time was the Pan Am Lockerbie flight. Uh, Nora and me, my wife, we were booked on that. And he, she just couldn't pack a suitcase in time. So we changed the flight to the next day, didn't tell anyone, and went back to bed. And there you go, on the TV, plane was blown out of the sky. And for what? What, what does terrorism solve? What does killing anybody solve? Just, there you go, just passive resistance. This is my methodology in life. I think it works better. The second you've killed another human being shows you have no value at all, or values in other people just selfish interest. Is it, is it heroic to be a suicide bomber, for instance? I mean, there's a big question, isn't it? I think that's a, a real sign of a fucking arsehole. Yeah. Completely misled and completely dominated by either politics or religion. And those two things are a poison to me. Sorry, your highness. <laughs> <laughs> You're mostly Irish. What do you make of Brexit? Brexit. Six or one half a dozen to the other can see the good and the bad in it. But there's no point moaning. The people have spoken and the people were sick and fed up of being told what to do by unknown entities. You couldn't complain or correct anything. And so it was just endless debt ad infinitum. Well, now Britain's got itself back. Let's see what it can do on its own two feet. The shame is it's a conservative government and they bollocks everything. <laughs> Were you ever an anarchist? Uh, is anybody really seriously? <laughs> uh, I mean, I how think... are you going to be an anarchist? The, the, the roads you use, the shoes on your feet, these are all made by corporations. <laughs> Uh, the toothpaste. <laughs> the mirror you're looking in. <laughs> How can you be an anarchist? You'd be bollock naked in the woods. <laughs> and by the way, a corporation owns those woods. <laughs> when should we expect the next... Uh, as soon as we finish touring. And I, I couldn't tell you when that is, but it'll be sometime next year. We like to make our records as uh, quick as we can. Just <coughs> rush in and just whatever ideas are in our heads. So it's, just, it's a brilliant situation for all of us now, Pill. Finally, with that, with that record company pressure and endless debt, it's, uh, it's now sink or swim, really, and we survive according to uh, the money earned by performing live. So we like to do that, continue touring all around the world as much as we can. That's what keeps us together. We travel together. We travel with the crew together on the same coach, wherever that takes us. But that creates brilliant work type situations where conversations lead to deeper thoughts. And it's just a sheer pleasure to get into a recording environment and be able to unravel all those things and find that they all mesh rather well. Is Spotify the future? What? Is Spotify the future? Is what? Spotify. Spotify.
collecting the accolades once the serious work had been done. Oh, it's me what did it. Such a liar. Lazy coward. I remember he, he was running for mayor once in London. And, uh, and I was asked what I thought about that. And I said, you watch, you'll back out in the end, because he lacks commitment. And lo and behold, that's exactly what he did. And it was the same with us. Um, once we started, and the sheer ferocity of, of a of what was coming at us, um, he couldn't cope. And he'd just lock himself in his office and uh, quite literally lock it so that you couldn't get in, he wouldn't answer the phone. He'd just sit there in paralyzed fear. And so, how can I miss that? Well, I'll tell you how, because his lack of presence meant I could write and do and be the person I really am. Right? And then that cheeky fuck had the nerve to turn around later and say it was all his idea. I mean, hello, I'm John. I'm still going strong, ain't I? Woo! Yeah! yeah. Fuck yeah! 60 years young. Why does the mind of all sound so good here today, so fresh? Because I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, to make that record, I mean, like I said, I hadn't sung at all up until that, that year, that, that same year we made it. it, was when we were just doing a few gigs. But I had to quickly find a voice, and I think I did real well. I uh, definitely had a knack for writing. I mean, I can hit the point in the subject and do it really accurately. And a lot of those songs really forecast quite a few scenarios. So. But that was luck too, you know. I mean, it's lucky that they spotted me on King's Road in a I Hate Pink Floyd t-shirt. <laughs> oh, the irony of it. I love Pink Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Johnny Rotten does. What are your thoughts on Martin Hannett and Factory Records? Pardon? Martin Hannett and Factory Records. Any thoughts? Uh, no, nothing at the moment. Sounds like an empty bucket to me. How do you feel about music sharing? Uh, no, fuck off. That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I, I kind of think what, what I know what you're saying about, like, uh, should music be free? Well, yeah, okay, you can have all the rubbish music you like free, <laughs> but if someone's going to sit down and make something really excellent, then they've got every right to fucking ask you to help pay for the making of. We are here. And, uh, well, with me, here we are, Pill, I mean, we put out stuff now and we make sure that that's to the absolute highest quality it can possibly be made at. And of course that, that affects our pocket because we don't overcharge for that. But that's surely what all these other top line bands should be doing but aren't. And so there it goes, you know. I'm the one sniggered at, but they're the fuckers cheating you. <laughs> Formaldehyde. <laughs> I take a good glass of that every morning. <laughs> I don't know, you know. A sheer, a sheer will to live, really. Full on face the world. No cowardice in me. No, I don't, don't take easy routes. I mean, I've done everything, really. You know, chemical wise. I, I should have been conditioned a long time back. I drink like a fucking fish. <laughs> I put so many bleaches on the top of my head. My hair's thicker than it's ever been. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a mystery. <laughs> I'm 
you're so lucky to have me. Uh, yeah, I will. I will, because the idea of a burial or, or even cremation, I think, is like kind of robbery. If it, you know, when, once you've gone, you've gone, and share your body parts. And I know damn well the medical students looking at my naked body on the slab are going to have a hilarious time. <laughs> <laughs> that is a reward. <laughs> I love touring, yeah. I never used to. You know, in the early days, because of the panic and fear and all of that that goes on in your head and the self-doubt. Uh, now, I just love it. I can't wait to actually be on the stage. I'm a nervous wreck before. But for me, the most enjoyable thing is looking out of a coach bus window and just watching geology pass you oh. by. It's thrilling. And America is uh, probably the best scenery in the world because state by state is entirely different landscapes from you know pine forest to flat out desert or the canyons of utah amazing love it and i'm going home now <laughs> I'm going home via every damn bar in this town. Yeah.